Carlson, Jada Daniowa, we are Lossi Badon. Hello everyone and welcome to the Link Shack. My name is Michael and today in this video we're going to discuss the Yoruba language, also known as Ede Yoruba. We're going to talk about some phrases of the language, then we're going to go over some grammar features of the language, and then we will end with a few longer sentences in Yoruba so that you can get an idea of how longer sentences work in a Niger Congo language. Now let's dive into the video now, shall we? Yoruba is among the many languages of West Africa and forms part of the gigantic Niger Congo language family. It is used in the Lukumi language, a sort of oral glossary of sorts, of words and phrases derived from Yoruba. This language serves as the liturgical language of the Santeria or Regla de Ocha, religion of Cuba, and other communities who practice a religion and other African deity-influenced religions such as Candomblé in Brazil and elsewhere. It is spoken in southwestern Nigeria, as well as in Benin and Togo. Yoruba has used two different scripts throughout its history, including the Ajami script, a variant of the Arabic script, and in the past century, a Latin orthography has been devised and disseminated to Yoruba speakers. Phrases. How are you? I'm good. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good night now. What is your name, I wonder? Urukomini. My name is. She unso Yoruba. Do you speak Yoruba? The tonal system. Yoruba has three different sorts of tones: the high tone, the medium tone, and the low tone. Changing a tone in a word can result in a different meaning for that word. This is very similar to many Chinese languages or Vietnamese. Look at some of these examples. Oko. Meaning husband. Oko. This word is using medium tone. Meaning ho, or a type of shovel, is uses a high tone on the second vowel. Oko. Meaning spear uses the low tone. Oko. Vehicle. This uses the low tone on the second vowel. Another word. Iba. Time. This uses the low tone on both vowels. Iba. Meaning 200 uses the mid tone. Iba. This means garden egg. And it uses the low tone on the first and a high tone on the second vowel. Iba. This one means climbing rope, which uses mid tone on the first vowel and low tone on the second vowel. Let's take a look at these last two examples. Iwo. Meaning hook, uses the low tone on both vowels. Iwo. Meaning poison, uses mid tone on both vowels. Note that high tones are not possible at the beginning of words in Yoruba. Ori. This word meaning head. Igu. This word meaning bottom. Ewuru. This word means bitter leaves. Huh, the leaves are bitter. I, I don't think I want that in my tea, sir. Syntax. Typically, Yoruba is a subject-verb-object language, like English and many Indo-European languages. Take a look at some of these examples. Mufera Iwemeji. Mo means I, and fe, which means to like or to love, means to want in this context, followed by the word for to buy, ra, Iwe meaning a book, and meji meaning two. This means I want to buy two books. And the second sentence here. Olu yolosi Ibadan. You see, Olu will go to Ibadan. Olu and yo is the future tense meaning will. Lo means to go. Si is a preposition meaning to. And Ibadan is a city in Nigeria. Nouns. Nouns in Yoruba do not distinguish between singular and plural. And most of the time, they are not the cleansed. Nouns in Yoruba can be formed in a variety of ways, including duplication, compounding, and affixation or infixation, depending on where the word it is. Affixation. Yoruba attaches suffixes and affixes of different tones to form new words and ideas. 
The first vowel indicates whether it is a low or mid-tone prefix. In this, in these examples, M will be for mid-tone and L will be for low-tone. Meaning to be soft or dead. results in a word meaning idiot or low-tone. Eh, oui. This word using the mid-medium tone means to wrap. The combination of these two eh, oui. results in the word meaning leaves. Eh, ro. This word, coming from ro to think, eh, ro. results in this word meaning thought using the low-tone. The fourth example eh. She. Meaning to break forms a word she. meaning poverty using the low tone. This word e -yo. meaning to rejoice e -yo. forms a word known as salt using the medium tone. This one's interesting because rejoice meaning salt. It's very interesting to me. Some examples of affixes inside of a word or infixes are these. Kile, kile. This word means any bad house where the key part means bad. In the second example, como, como. this word means a bad child. Redupliquation. Many adjectives and passive participles of verbs, which act like adjectives, can be partially reduplicated to form new adjectives, and new nouns can be formed by fully duplicating the word. Je. Meaning to eat. Je, je. Meaning to be eaten or edible. Si meaning to cook, si, si. meaning cooked. Homo. This one means child, as you saw in the previous example. Homo, homo. And the combination of those two means grandchildren, ya. meaning mother. Ya, ya. And this combination, which isn't exactly exact, but close enough, means grandmother. Elision. Yoruba often uses elision, meaning that one word will sort of join into the next one forming a sort of rapid speech. We do this a lot in English with going to or wanting to becoming gonna and wanna. And we have a lot more examples of this. This is called elision. Yoruba generally uses this uh, to combine two vowels. So generally if the first vowel, if the first word ends in a vowel and the next one begins with a vowel, then this will happen. Mufera or be. In this sentence meaning, I want to buy a knife, the mo means buy, means to want, to buy, means knife. This combines into the form meaning, I want to buy a knife. In this sentence, the verb ra loses its final vowel when aligning with, but you can see that the word's next vowel is still intact. Second sentence. Mura iwi meaning I bought a book, mo meaning I, ra meaning bought in this sentence, and this one meaning a book, combines into murawi. In this sentence you can see that the verb ra kept its vowel, but kept the tone of the next word. This happens when the second word starts in the vowel e. Muta obe. I sold a knife. This ta combines with obe to create toe. The whole sentence Mutobe. means I sold a knife. Adjectives. Adjectives, adjectives in Yoruba come after the noun, like in many Romance languages. Obe gigun. A long knife. Omo dada. A good child. Omo kukuru. A short child. Verbs. Verbs in Yoruba do not have conjugations for pronouns. So a verb using the, the pronoun I or we or they is going to be the same in all forms. The pronoun must always be used in a Yoruba sentence, unless you are using a sentence with just the future tense or just the non-future tense or the past tense. Those are the only times when you don't have to use a pronoun in Yoruba. Splitting verbs. Splitting verbs are not so common in Yoruba, but it still happens. It appears that the object of such sentences serves as the agent in them. Meaning to introduce. Olu fi ade han ola. Olu introduced ade to ola. The sentence ade appears between fi and han because ade is the main object and the primary agent of the introducing. Second example. 
Oluba Ichunoje. Meaning Oyo Ojo destroyed the yam. Ba means to damage, and ye is the other part. Isu na, the yam, is between ba and je because it is the object of Ojo's damage. Tense. Yoruba verbs themselves do not really have tense. There are two tenses in Yoruba, the future tense and the non-future tense. Verbs in Yoruba are often, are often constructed with aspect or mood markers, which come before the verb. Ade yolo si ibadon. Meaning, Ade will go to Ibadan. Yo, as you see here, goes before go. Si Ibadan. To Ibadan. In the second sentence here, Olu, Olo si Ibadan. O is the past tense. And in this sentence, Olu went to Ibadan. Aspect and mood. Yoruba uses a wide range of mood and aspect markers in front of the verb to mark different aspects of the sentence. Many of these are very similar to English in our modal verb system, such as should, would, usually would, usually don't, and other forms that Yoruba has. Some are similar to English, others not so much. Atima. Usually will. Verb plus ing, meaning can or to be able to, meaning would have, meaning usually don't. And there are many more of these, such as should, will have, even if, and various forms with usually and others. These aspect and mood words go into the same position in the sentence as the tenses do. In this sentence, you can see that the word for would have goes before the verb to like. In the second sentence, meaning Ojo usually doesn't like money, you can see here that it goes before the word for to like. In this last example, meaning Ojo should like money, you can see here that it goes before the verb to like. T means has, as an auxiliary verb, means will have, and other forms using T may have influence or be related to Cape Verdean Creole and Papiamento's taba, meaning will have, or Cape Verdean Creole's tita plus verb, meaning the gerundive or the ing. Now that we've had a look at some of Yoruba's grammar, let's take a look at some longer sentences in the language. This sentence means the boy who, who Olu saw at the market yesterday came to Ibadan yesterday. Omokuri means boy. Ti means that. Olu is Olu. I means to see. Ni means at. Oja is a market. Ni is at. I know. Yesterday. So you can see here that the time goes at the end of the clause. Means to come. Means to, as in the preposition. Ibadan is a city. Ni means. Ni is kind of unclear here. And means yesterday. The second example. Uluba ki ade in this sentence, ba means to accept. Ki means that. Ade. Ade is ade. Ri means to see. Baba means father. Oh. Means him. This sentence means Olu agreed that Ade should see his father. And the last sentence. Ade ra aku. Shubo ulukomu means ade. Ra means to buy. Apu is a bag. Shubo. This is the conjunction but. But 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 I didn't mean to. Ulu means olu. Ko. This is the negative form, similar to Cape Verde Creole ka. Mo means to know. 
This sentence means Ade by the bag, which Olu did not know about. Question of the day. If you speak or have studied other Niger Congo languages, then what similarities or differences does Yoruba have with this other language that you speak or have studied in its grammar? Those who speak Yoruba and have heard some of the Yoruba influenced liturgical languages, such as Lukumi, can you understand it? If so, how different is it from modern Yoruba? For those who don't speak Yoruba, what parts of its grammar did you find familiar or unknown? Thank you all for watching. If you enjoy language related content, then please consider subscribing to the Link Shack channel. We come out with videos pretty often. Find us on our social media accounts at the Link Shack handle on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And this is our official website at LankShack.org. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.